Hello, my name is Dustin Anderson. I'm the Vice President of Construction and Real Estate for SAGE. Uh, today we have the pleasure of welcoming you to a webinar called The Future of Construction Technology. Uh, we're going to learn how the cloud can help transform your construction financials. With us today are two very special guests. Our first guest is Dan Miller. Uh, he's a Senior Vice President of Product for Sage Intact. He's been very instrumental in the development of this incredible platform. Our second guest is Dennis Stasekel. Uh He works for Sage Construction as well, and he's the Customer Experience Director. We're going to go ahead and get started with Dan. And Dan, I have a question for you. A lot of people are talking about the cloud. They have been for quite some time. But we know that with Sage Intact, this is a true multi-tenant native cloud tool. Dan, can you help us understand that? Sure, Dustin, I'd be happy to. Uh, you're right, there is a lot of confusion around the term cloud. Uh, enough so we recently partnered uh, with one of our analyst firms, uh, Mint Jutris, to take a look at this in more depth uh, so we can look at what multi-tenancy really looks like and the value of that. Um, there's more detail about uh, this if you're interested uh, at the Sage Intech blog at blog.sageintech.com. Uh, but the, the basics are, uh, you know, from our perspective, you're really looking at uh, the value uh, for a customer from the economics or cost considerations perspective, um, what you get in terms of innovation, uh, and what you get from a growth and uh, a growth perspective as well as for distributed environments. Uh, and then also security, risk, and business continuity-related issues. Uh, there's real value in that. You know, Sage Intact has been built as a multi-tenant cloud application from the very beginning. Uh, it was designed for this environment. And so here, here are a couple of the, the key considerations. So from an economic perspective, uh, there are uh, many benefits. Um, first of all, it's about the level of scale that can be provided. Uh, for our customers. You know, unlike a client service system or a hosted system, customers run on essentially the same architectural design behind the scenes. We're able to provide customers the usage they need uh, or the scale that they need as their, their needs increase as they are, are growing. They don't have to worry about provisioning specific computing uh, equipment or being think, thinking about their, their infrastructure. We're really able to scale that out for them. Uh, as well as providing some systems behind the scenes uh, that would potentially be cost prohibitive for, for many businesses. The second area is really around innovation. Um, businesses, as long as they're uh, thriving, are going to evolve. Uh, a business is going to change you know, how it goes to market. They're going to change uh, what they need uh, from their, uh, their ERP system. Um, and as as, uh, as we can attest to from the intact perspective, we are able to keep pace and stay ahead of our customers because we're thinking about our uh, customer success, not just trying to sell the next license. We're looking at what's going to make our customers successful. Um, just as one example, uh, every, re every year we have four major releases, and each of those releases has approximately 50 new features in it. Uh, those features are designed to help customers be more successful, to help them uh, make their businesses grow uh, and be able to thrive. Uh, we're able to work with customers to build those out in a way that allows for them to automate more processes uh, you know, with each new release. So you're not waiting for uh, an implementation project to come, you know, come out somewhere down the road. It's something you, you're going to get automatically with each of those new releases. Uh, the third area is really about helping uh, customers uh, be able to grow. Um, I mentioned a little bit about scalability, but we're thinking ahead of what our customers need. Um, we uh, just as you know, this is true for for most SaaS companies, but we really think about how do we make sure that our system is going to scale ahead of customers' needs. Uh, we look at you know what a customer is using today, but they may have peak loads that they need to be able to serve. Maybe they do all of their billing at the end of a period, or maybe they have closed processes that are more time intensive. We can build out scale to handle of those things ahead of our customers. Um, and then also, as uh, businesses grow, they often go from a single location to multiple locations, uh, possibly spread across the globe. Uh, and as they as they look at that. Uh, we're able to allow for that, and all they need is a web browser. 
And the, the last area that I want to just touch on is really about security, risk, and business continuity. Um, in that area, uh, we think about building ahead of what our customers need, thinking about building in redundant systems, full backup solutions, um, disaster recovery solutions. Uh, so, and these are done in a way where there's no additional fee to our customers. Um, they're done in a way where uh, they happen behind the scenes and that customers really don't have to worry about those. So those are just a few of the highlights about multi-tenancy. Yeah, thanks, Dan. I, as I've gotten closer to Sage Intact, I just can't believe the quality and the amount of content that actually comes out with each of those quarterly releases. It's, it's really something else. So one of the concepts that I've heard a lot about is this concept of dimensions. It seems to be at the core of Sage Intact. Can you help us understand what exactly dimensions are? Yeah, Dustin, you're right. Uh, dimensions are a core concept for Sage Intech. They really simplify your chart of account structure and make uh, transactional coding uh, really uh, a lot easier and straightforward for our users. Um, but most importantly, uh, they provide a way to provide deep insight uh, for businesses. Um, you see some examples of what dimensions are uh, on the slide. Uh, but the dimensions are really a way of capturing the things that matter to a business, uh, the business drivers, as a part of the normal transaction uh, capture process. Uh, as a part of that transaction capture process, um, you're able to, as you do this coding, um, you're essentially capturing what you want to be able to create uh, a P&L level view uh, and create metrics around for, for each of those different dimensional values. Uh, so here are a couple of examples. Um, so there's one uh, that's pretty simple. You might want to be able to create a P&L by location or a P&L by department. But what about uh, a builder who's looking about building out their performance against different cost codes? Um, you can get a different a P&L level view for each cost code, um, just as another example. Uh, you can also uh, you may want to create uh, performance-based metrics for your projects. Uh, and you may also want to be able to look at how uh, you include those into uh, dashboards or reports. Well, Sage Intact provides that natively within the system. As part of this transactional coding capability, uh, we express that into our reports and our dashboarding, which provide for those capabilities. That's great, Dan. I, I think that actually tees up a question for Dennis uh, later about specifically how we can leverage these dimensions in construction. So as technology evolves, um, so does the role of the CFO, or in construction we also call them construction financial managers. Um, Sage has done a lot of work on the evolution of the CFO from 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0. What is Sage Intact doing to support this evolution? Well, that's one of the things that we do at Sage Intact is we partner very closely with our customers to understand what's going on for them. It's not just how they're using the product. It's about understanding the role that they play, the role that the finance team plays, the role that the CFO plays within their organization. And one of the changes that we've been seeing is an evolution, as you described, a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 kind of uh, role. Uh, it's evolving um, over the it really has been evolving over the last uh, couple of decades. Um, really what we've been seeing is a transition from being focused on a historical point of view, uh, looking at making sure that books were c captured and closed accurately, uh, providing uh, an accurate view of what, ha what has happened, and as well as uh, also being compliant uh, with any kind of uh, you know, audit requirements. Uh, but then that's kind of changed. That, that moved into a, a mode where the tools that were used to do that got sophisticated enough, um, and Intact was really focused on doing that. Um, we uh, were enabling customers to be able to understand what's going on now, being able to look at what's happening today and making decisions about what their business needs to do in, in real time about today. But what we see happening uh, is a transition to where it's not just about today, it's about what's happening into the future. And we call this CFO uh, 3.0, our, our finance 3.0. This is where we're moving to a model where instead of looking backwards or looking at just today, to a model of, of having continuous accounting 
uh, continuous trust and continuous insight. This continuous idea is, uh, uh, is really powered by this idea that with SAS computing systems, there's a vast amount of computing power that we can apply to particular problems. Uh, rather than having the finance team spend time manipulating spreadsheets or doing data entry, they're able to uh, move to a higher value role. Uh, the, t the finance organization is able to come alongside the rest of the business to leave a unique perspective on what's going on in the business. So they're a focal point for where all things kind of come together. Um, that insight provides them the ability to be advisors for the rest of the business as to what kinds of decisions are going to make that business successful. Um, and that computing power that we can apply allows for that to take place. This is already happening. We see with our customers that about 70% of all transactions are already being created through our open um, API. So that means you know, transactions are coming in electronically through other computing systems. That means no data entry uh, for those tra transactions. So customers are already able to focus on the exceptions rather than the rule uh, of the day-to-day the -day creation of transactions. Um, and we're working on ways to further that to be able to eliminate even more of that with our focus. Dan, that's just really cool. I, um, it's, it's part of what makes this so exciting when we think about this from a construction perspective is the platform that Sage Intact has developed uh, really is, is limitless in terms of what we can ultimately do with it. So, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Sage Intact does serve a number of customers in a number of different industries. So why bring Sage Intact into construction? Yeah, Dustin, uh, you know, it's been part of our plan uh, for quite some time to be able to serve the construction industry. You know, over a decade uh, ago, we delivered our first solution to serve project-based businesses. Uh, it's been a part of this, you know, this plan we've had to be able to extend those capabilities more deeply uh, so that we could, could serve companies that have more complex project needs, uh, like construction companies. Uh, and you know, we got really excited when Sage and Intact joined forces. We came together, and we, you know, between the cloud expertise that the Sage Intact team brings and the deep domain expertise that Sage has in construction, it really enabled us to come together in a way that I think is unique. Um, we, about 18 months ago, uh, really started working on the project in earnest, and uh, in March, we launched publicly uh, the new solution at Con Expo. We are super excited about being able to come alongside construction companies and be able to create solutions uh, for these kinds of businesses. Yeah, Dan, I, I echo that. We are so excited to be working closely with Sage Intact. The platform you guys have developed is it's just phenomenal. It creates endless opportunities. So um, we're going to transition to Dennis Stasekel, but please uh, hold on tight, Dan. I really appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to do a little Q&A at the end of this, so we'll circle back to you in a minute. But I'm going to transition to Dennis Stasekel. Uh, Dennis, so Dan talked about dimensions and their power. Can you give us a couple of examples as to how this might relate to construction companies? Dan's list of dimensions included many that apply to most contractors. Now I'm going to talk about three of them, locations, projects, and customers. Analysis of project profitability by these dimensions can provide different insights into your operations. Do you have certain customers that are always more profitable than others? What are they, get, what are they doing on the Dallas projects as compared to the ones in Houston? They're always much closer to their profit targets. Let's take a look. As data flows through the system, it is tagged with these different dimensions. Once tagged, they can be used with the intact dashboards. This dashboard includes all the projects. Notice the information is presented in two different ways. Across the top of the page are called performance cards, a great way to present different KPIs. Notice on the monthly cards, the ones on the right, how they provide visual, visual cues to how well this month compares to last month. They even show the previous month's comparison, 30% profit margin this month compared to 13% last month. Hmm, we're having a really good month. 
The other part is that is a basically a simple P&L by project. Projects can be shown individually or grouped in some logical manner. Here we are showing just a list of all the projects with their individual profitability. Across the top of the page, you will notice three filter boxes. My, my dashboards are set to provide an as of date, a location filter, and a project filter. Let's explore. On this screen, I use that middle, middle filter to select all the offices tied to our GC work. Notice the list of jobs displayed as well as the performance cards were quickly refreshed with the numbers related to the GC offices. This is an easy way to quickly compare the performance of one location to another. But what if we want to quickly see more detail from last month? By changing the as of date and refreshing, you can easily see all the project detail for last month. Notice the blue highlights. Each of these provides some sort of jump to additional detail. Through these links, you can, dr you can often drill down to source entry documents. Earlier, I looked at a cross-section cross of all my GC locations, but let's say I wanted to look at a particular location. Just select the desired location, and the job for that location comes into play. Dallas ended up with a real strong march, but as you look a little closer, I actually see that the La Quinta job really did well, but the other one not as much. So by drilling into the details, Quite often, you can discover more pertinent, meaningful information. In good times and in bad, we all know that one bad job can impact our overall performance. We have all heard that you might be able to get a small margin increase as a result of great execution, but the downside risk is always greater. Job selection during the bidding process is critical. What types of jobs are you performing well on? These next few examples show how we can review the jobs based on different job attributes. For example, type of, type of project or project manager. Notice this view is showing all hotel projects. You can qualify this further by only looking at closed jobs or those jobs that you flag to be in the data set for your, your analytics. That's great, Dennis. So you said that we can actually look at this even by project manager? Yes, Dustin. Project manager, of course, is an attribute linked to every single job. So let's look at a profitability by your project managers. In this big example, you know, we're looking at uh, project manager Sanford and how well he is doing. And with a click of a button, we could switch to another project manager and see how he is performing. And of course, charts and graphs. The financial data can also be presented through different visualization tools like you see here. Dimensions can help you more effectively analyze your project's profitability. That's great, Dennis. I just love the power of dimensions within construction. So. So how does Sage Intact in general, how does it help um, get a true picture of the job? Dustin, it gives us full visibility into the project from all perspectives. This dashboard provides high level visibility into the different types of numbers for your projects. It presents the revenue side of the project via the contract amount, total build, and percent build columns. It presents the cost through the project estimates, commitments, total cost, and percent spent columns. And of course, your profitability position showing you estimated and actual gross profit and project mar margin information. All of this providing a holistic view of the financial side of the project. Again, notice the blue drill down areas. This can take you into additional levels of detail, even back to the source entry document. For example, from the commitment column, I can drill into a purchase order or a subcontract. Notice how the work breakdown structure of project cost code and cost type is available for the line items. Notice in the middle portion of the screen, multi-currency exchange rate data is also, also captured. Now, 
This is an example of a revenue contract containing the schedule of values. From the contract, from the financial contract, you can drill down and see the schedule of value breakdown in the bottom of the screen and how retainage can be controlled by line item. Screens throughout the Intact Construction Solution now have these construction required fields dealing with the job work breakdown structure as well as the industry fields like retainage. Thanks, Dennis. I really think that those uh, screenshots that you're sharing there from the product help showcase just the power of Sage Intact and how it can benefit the construction industry. But one of the other things that Dan talked about was this API first development, the, the platform that Sage Intact has built. How does that help our construction industry? Yeah, Dustin, within the construction industry, there's been billions of dollars spent on the development of construction technology. We at Sage firmly believe that no single technology provider can provide solutions that meet all of their customers' technology needs. We want to provide choices to our customers. We want our customers to pick the technology, the technology solutions that best meet their needs. One of the strengths of the Intact solution is its ability to integrate with external software. Proof of this is the Sage Intact marketplace shown here. Our marketplace partners provide great extensions to our core solutions. For years, Sage Construction Real Estate has established relationships with leading industry technology providers. We are bringing these partners to the Sage Intact Marketplace. Here are three partners that we are currently working with. For the commercial construction market, industry leading Procore. We have close to 1,000 companies integrating with Procore with our Sage 100 contractor and our Sage 300 construction real estate products. The Intact integration is even going to be better because of the strong Intact integration platform. For the residential market, industry-leading hyphen solutions. The hyphen solution provides a community for the residential home builder, the residential suppliers, and the residential subcontractors. Our Intact home builders will be able to tie into this community with the Intact integration. Many contractors self-perform. Workforce Go is a human resources management and payroll platform. We have integrated this solution into the Intact offering. So Dennis, you mentioned Procore. Um, can you expand a little bit on what that integration will look like? Like I mentioned earlier, we've, we've had long established integrations and relationships with Procore. You know, our experience to date has basically take, given us the ability to take what we've done, learn, and make it better. This screen here illustrates many of the touch points and integration points between the two products. Cost codes, cost types, vendors, companies, project data, um, estimates, budgetary data committed cost data, the whole change management process. The screen illustrates a lot of those touch points. The arrows in the, in the middle, of course, is the flow of the data. You'll notice in some cases we've got data flowing from Sage Intact to Procore. In other cases, we've got it flowing from Procore to Sage Intact. And in other cases, we actually have it flowing both ways. We're very, very excited about this integration. All right, thank you, Dennis. And we're gonna welcome Dan back as well. We're gonna to turn to question and answer. So please enter questions via chat if you haven't already done so. And we'll give it just a couple of seconds here and we'll start answering some of the questions that you guys have posed. All right, well, Dennis, Dan, thank you very much. Appreciate um, the information you provided. Uh, the exciting thing is we have a ton of questions <laughs> that have come in. So let's do our best to kind of go through a speed round here and, and get to as many of them as we can. And uh, for the participants uh, joining in, uh, the attendees joining in, we will answer every one of the questions. We'll circle back with you by email if we don't get to them live. So um, the first one, and Dan, I'll start with you. Uh, Dennis, feel free to chime in. But there's a lot of questions around um, dimensions. Uh, so, you know, are dimensions defined in the original setup and then unchangeable? 
Um, can dimensions help us with historical data? Are there limits to the number of dimensions? So, Dan, maybe you could take a stab at that to start with. Yeah, I'm happy to, to try and address a number of those questions. Um, dimensions can be set up as a part of the original setup. You can add dimensions later if you decide that there's something more that's fundamental you need to be able to monitor. Uh, but they're different from the idea of, you know, tagging transactions. These are, these are uh, you know, that you may, may be transitory. These are more uh, real business drivers um, that you're going to keep for uh, managing your company. Uh, so it's not it's not something you're going to decide on a dimension and then, you know, six months or a year later decide that that was not the right one. Let's choose a different one. Uh, that's not what they're intended to do. These are real core business drivers for your business. Um, uh, but you can add to them over time. Um, in terms of historical uh, data, uh, that's after, you know, one of the things that people do is they uh, can you know, bring over transactions into Intact is they will go back through and tag transactions with their dimensional information. If you're talking about once you've done the conversion, um, a, a dimension that would be added uh, would be from that point forward uh, because it would require you to literally tag each of those transactions. You know, only you have the expertise, your business, for us to be able to make those determinations. Uh, there are ways during the historical data import to be able to go through that tagging process as part of the implementation. Um, but in terms of you know adding after the fact, it would be something where only you would have that expertise to be able to do that, um, and it would mean adding each of the individual transactions. So it's generally something that at the point that you decide you want it, you, you know, it's from that point going forward. And then in terms of uh, limits, um, uh, there you know we we typically look at having um, you know most businesses will have you know a handful. Um, uh, for for running their organization within the construction world, there it's a slightly larger handle, um, just because of looking at you know the key elements that drive uh, the kinds of projects that construction companies use. Um, uh, but we have companies that will have added you know uh, twenty ish kinds of di uh, dimensions. That would be a lot uh, for companies that really have twenty different core business drivers. Uh, great, thank you, Dan. One one of the things to add to that, um, in the standard dimensions that actually ship with the construction solution, they include things like job, employee, vendor, cost code, cost type slash category. Uh, during the migration services that we are uh, uh, planning out right now and do uh, plan to uh, um, allow our customers to have access to uh, a, a set of service migrations, we will um, map a lot of the uh, keys or attributes inside of Sage 300 directly to those. So a job will be mapped to the job um, uh, dimension. A cost code will be mapped to the cost code dimension or the task dimension, etc. So the ones that we can identify, we will actually be mapping as part of the migration tools. Great, thank you, Dan and Dennis. Um, Dennis, uh, a question for you uh, that came up is, uh, again, kind of about integrations. You touched on it towards the end of our presentation, but uh, you know, things that are currently integrated with Sage 300 construction and real estate, like Procore or maybe Sage service operations, other tools out there, um, will those get integrated with um, Sage Intact construction as well as um, related to payroll, certified payroll, et cetera, with Workforce Go? Yeah, so in uh, in general, the companies that we have partnered with on the Sage 300 side, we are also working those partnerships forward into the intact world. Uh, we have active projects going on today with a number of them, uh, including Procore. The Procore integration we've been working on actually for quite a long time. And as we wrap up some work that we have to do in the core system around change orders and change management, that's when they will be wrapping up their integration. We have a target towards the, um, what we call, the, well, I'm just gonna say the fourth quarter of this year for the Procore integration, uh, the first level, I kind of described in that in the uh, in the presentation about the different touch points. So it's going to include everything, cost and dollar and commitments and um, getting that data back and forth. 
In addition to that, companies like Workforce Go, we have been working very closely with as well to uh, tie that into the project costing system. Um, so that we will continue to develop. We also have other uh, partnerships that we are we are talking to. There is a partnership that we, a company that we work with very closely that works with ADP, for example. And so between ADP, uh, this partner and Intech, we will be able to address um, some of the things that ADP can address, like certified payroll, Davis Bacon, et cetera. So we've looked for partners basically wherever the gaps might be. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to ask one more question. We are at the bottom of the hour and the end of our time together, but I'm going to ask one more question, Dennis. Um, is there a migration path um, for uh, existing Sage products to Sage Intact construction? Yes, and you know, from from both the the application side and as we get final pricing in place for our customers, we'll be able to communicate that towards the latter part of this year. Um, and then in addition to that, I mentioned we are working on migration tools to help in the migration um, effort. The the level of detail that we're migrating, that is what we're kind of working out right now. Do we bring over uh, current year plus two years back? Do we bring over all active jobs? Those are a lot of the questions that we are going through right now. We can't guarantee that all the data is in Sage 300 for too far into the past for a variety of reasons. Thus, we want to make sure we can get uh, enough data to make sure your business is able to continue actively. Great. Thank you, Dennis. And, and that's a great question. Um, if you're an existing Sage construction real estate customer, your business partner uh, would certainly be able to help you walk through that process as well. So, um, folks, thank you very much for your time today. Again, we do have um, dozens more questions that we are, weren't able to get to, but we will address those with you individually. So thank you very much for your time today. I'm sure to appreciate it and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much. Take care.